We understand that there's all this data that's out there for us to discover. The question is how? How do you go about it? So I thought I would just take a couple of minutes and share with you the processes that I've gone through over the past, let's just call them decades, <laughs> in my sets of experiences of analyzing data and then applying the results of that data to make business decisions that ultimately created hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of economic value. So this is a framework. And in this framework, there are five key points. The first thing that's critical when you're approaching using your own data is make sure you understand and analyze your business. What does that mean? Now, this list is not exhaustive. It's just things that I put down that I think could represent a thought process that everybody goes through when you're applying the analysis to the information that you have. Do you really understand your target market? Really? Have you created the discipline of true sophistication of the understanding of your customers, your potential customers, the customers that are leaving you, the customers that are engaged with you? Do you understand the growth drivers to your business? How do you make money? It is our responsibility when we're inside of businesses to really understand how money is being made and how that relates back to your target market and to your value proposition. The next thing, if you feel confident that you really have analyzed and understood your business well, is to identify and decide upon a strategy and tactics based on the findings that you went through in your analysis. So the first thing I like to look at is what are our core competencies? What are we really good at? Our probability of success is much greater if we focus on the things that we're very good at. Sometimes it's very exciting to say, let's go and embark on a new, a new space. But in reality, we can't ignore the things that are at a core to our business and what we really know how to do. And when we understand our strengths, do we understand the impact of initiatives that we execute every single day and which of those initiatives are driving the highest impact? That in and upon itself is a whole analytic exercise. I'm sure that in all of your businesses, hundreds if not more programs are executed on an annual basis. And the question is how well do you understand them? And then when you do understand the outcomes and the results of the things that you're putting in market. Can you prototype and can you simulate the impact of changes that you would make to those programs? And when you simulate those processes, that's how you decide where you're going to take some risks and where you're going to make some changes. Each one of these steps has a whole set of analysis that goes along with it. Once you've now created these simulations of various actions that you may take based on the analysis that you've done, based on the information that you've brought together, can you design and develop a roadmap so that you can execute these in market? Remember Albert Einstein's quote. What does that roadmap look like? What are the offers that you're going to put in the market? How does the customer view them? How do you test? How do you learn? Do you do something um, as it relates to your testing strategy, rapid cycle testing? How fast can you learn? How quickly can you put things in market? What are the critical steps within your organization that need to be put into place in order to execute this roadmap? How do you integrate an organizational structure, maybe some organizational changes with the processes that you're putting into place to change some of your marketing initiatives. When all of that is understood, how do you enable and enact flawless execution? First, do you have the infrastructure in place and do you know what that infrastructure is and what the needs are? Have you thought about the customer experience? Because at the end of the day, that is what's most important as we think about our brands and as we think about our products. And can you resolve the problems that come up real time? Real time problem resolution can rely on as much on sophisticated analysis as the planning process. 
depending on how you then integrate that into your customer facing processes. And lastly, do you measure and learn? Where's your insight generation? How are you using it? Your sales process, your sales management process. Today, the sales processes are very sophisticated using high level analysis to create leads. And is your performance aligned with what you predicted? Do you have a discipline around it? Have you created those types of infrastructures within your organization so that you can read the results of the changes that you've made and then go back and start all over again? This is a framework that I believe organizations need to put into place in order to really, really create the opportunities through the use of analytics and their data. So let me give you a couple of examples. First, let's go please to the MasterCard example. I don't think anybody would doubt that MasterCard is a company that has big data. MasterCard spent about 15 years putting together this data environment so that they could be ready to transform the payments industry with actionable insights. If you look just at this slide, you'll see 32 million merchants, 22,000 issuers, 1.7 billion cards, 160 million transactions an hour. It's a lot of data. You need to be ready to be able to use that information, understand how to put that information together, and then understand the insights and the value that you can bring to market based on it. So I'm going to give you, please, the next slide. I'm going to give you an example of something that MasterCard did that is something that's less intuitive, something you might not think about. They studied U.S. gasoline consumption. Now, prior to, and MasterCard has something that's called a spending pulse. I don't know if you're all customers of MasterCard, if you use their spending pulse analytics. But prior to this uh, spending pulse that was focused a bit on uh, U.S. gasoline, Prices in the United States were based on the supply side of the chain. Basically, pricing of gas was driven by supply. MasterCard understood, though, that they could begin to dimension and understand demand. Basically, because they had all of the transactions that could look at consumption through retail, again, gas stations, all different types of consumption, and they could give a view of the way consumers were using the gasoline and the demand side of the equation. And when they did this analysis, they actually saw in this particular case that the number of barrels that were being pumped in every region of the United States was going down. So now you had a more balanced view of supply and demand, which is really what generates pricing models. And they are able to bring that into a market that maybe you wouldn't initially think about as being something that MasterCard would take a play in, but their data enables them to. So this is just an example of something that I thought was really interesting. Next slide. Everybody's dream is to be predictive. I've heard that from numerous people. And I think that when you think about, again, the use of our data, the insights that we're looking to generate, it's really about predicting. 